number two, Deuteronomy chapter number two. I'm not going to keep you but a few minutes this morning, but we're thankful for the goodness of God, and we've got a baptism here in just a little bit. But I want to give you a few things this morning out of this chapter that God laid on my heart sometime last week. And I began to think about, think about these things, about moving on, moving forward, uh, going ahead for the Lord. And I believe as a church, that's what we should uh, aspire to do, is to go forward, to move on. Not to be held back by the world or the things of the world or be held back by religion or anything else, but move forward for the Lord. Gabriel's Creek has, has come a long way in four years. I thank God for what he's doing here at the church. Amen. And he's, he gets all the glory. Amen. He gets all the glory. And we appreciate the move of God that we've seen here. But I believe there's so much further that as we can go as a church and as individuals. And I believe we, I believe we should move forward for the Lord. This scripture tells us in Deuteronomy chapter number 2, I'll begin reading and read about three verses here. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward. Now the children of Israel had been wandering about this mountain, around this mountain, for 40 years. Uh, they came out of, of uh, Egypt and God took them into, you know, God took them in, into the, across the Red Sea and they were going to enter into the Promised Land, into Canaan's land. But because of sin and unbelief and rebellion, God did not allow those that came out of Egypt to enter into Canaan's land. They, died, they, they wandered in the wilderness till all of those died off and the new ones coming along, along with Joshua and Caleb, were the ones that entered into Canaan land. And, and after 40 years, God said, that's enough. You've wandered long enough. You're going to go into to the Canaan land, into the promised land, the land that I have given you. And you've wandered long enough. It's time to turn northward. And friend, I believe we can gain from this scripture this fact that it is time that we move northward, that we go forward for the Lord. There's hard times in the wilderness. You read about the children of Israel in the wilderness, and you read about the things that, you know, the, the, the things that uh, they came into in the wilderness. Sometimes you and I go into the wilderness. Sometimes we as believers seem like we're wandering in the wilderness and seem like uh, God is, is not speaking to us or God is not helping us or God is not doing things for us. Tell you something, friend. You stay with the Lord and even in your darkest, deepest hour, your darkest, darkest time of trouble, God in heaven will help you and He will be with you. He will lead you and He will guide you even if you're in a wilderness. Now in the wilderness, God supplied their every need. They had want of nothing. Their shoes didn't wear out for 40. I, I go through a pair of shoes, work shoes, about, about every six months. But they had shoes that they had on their feet and clothes that they had that lasted for 40 years. Good workmanship, wasn't it? No, it's the hand of God. Amen. It's the hand of God. And if you're in the wilderness and you're going through the wilderness in your Christian life, in your spiritual life, if you'll stay close to the Lord, God will help you and God will be with you. And there'll be a mountaintop, amen. There'll be a mountaintop. There'll be a Canaan land for you to enter into. Now, I'll give you three things this morning real quickly and I'll be through. It's time, I believe, that we as a church and we as individuals, church members, we move forward, we go on with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the local church is all about. We're here this morning to do two things. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and share the gospel, the good news of, of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. And friend, I wonder this morning, should there be someone here that's lost without God? It's my business, amen. It's my job as a, as a preacher of the Word of God to tell you about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to warn you of the dangers if you do not accept the gospel and you do not accept Jesus as your Savior. It's my job. That's what I'm here for, and to preach the Word of God. And Lord, help us that we go forward with the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? If you believe the gospel, then this is what you believe. If you believe the gospel, you believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, 
named Mary. You believe that he was conceived of the Holy Ghost of God. If you believe the gospel, you believe this man Jesus lived a sinless, perfect, holy life upon this earth, a life without spot or without blemish. If you believe this, you believe Jesus is the Lamb of God. And you believe that on a hill called Calvary, amen, that Jesus suffered and bled and died and was nailed to that old rugged cross and died there on that old rugged cross and shed his blood for you and I if you believe the gospel. You also believe that if Jesus died on the cross for you and paid your sin debt that you could not pay, friend, we're all loaded down with sin. We're all born sinners into this world. And when we come to the age of accountability, we are accountable for our sins. And if we accept Jesus as our Savior, if we accept the gospel message, then we believe that uh, the gospel, then we can be born again by the grace of God. Now listen, we came into this world as sinners. Jesus died on the cross. Why? To pay the sin debt that I could not pay. I could live my life perfect as well as I could and still die and go to hell without God because I've ne I had never accepted the gospel. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left its crimson stain, but he washed me white as snow. How? By, the, by his own precious blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary. That blood was a blood, that lamb shed a blood sacrifice for me. John 1, 29 tells us, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And God in heaven sent his dear son Jesus as the Lamb of God into this world to pay a sacrificial price so that I don't have to go to hell. Man, friend, we're privileged people here today to be able to hear how that we can escape hell and go to heaven, believe in the gospel. Now, you believe that he died on the cross, yet we cannot leave him there on the cross of Calvary because he's not there, my friend. They placed him into a borrowed tomb, and they placed him in there knowing that he wasn't going to be there long. So they placed him in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day, Jesus rose for my justification. Amen. The resurrection of Christ tells us that God says amen to the sacrificial death. Without the resurrection, the gospel would be incomplete. But friend, I'm glad to tell you today that the gospel message is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now friend, you say, well, <coughs> I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Then if you don't believe that, then friend, you're hopelessly, helplessly lost without God and except you accept Him as your Savior, you'll die without God and you'll go to hell without God. It's imperative that you and I believe in the gospel. And I've heard all excuses. I've witnessed to, to people and I've talked to people about their salvation and I've heard all kinds of reasons why they don't accept Jesus as their Savior. Well, preacher, I don't need to. I, I, I live a good life. A preacher, I, I go to church. A preacher, I put money in the offering plate. <coughs> the Bible says, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And it doesn't matter how good you may be. It, may, it doesn't matter how good your parents are. It doesn't matter how, how good your church is. What matters is what's inside your heart. As a church and believers, we have a responsibility to this world to tell others about Jesus that died for their sins. Amen. So, preacher, I can't talk to people about their salvation. I'll tell you what you do. If you're praying, say, God, give me an open door. God will give you an open door. You say, preacher, I don't know what to say. If you pray for an open door and God gives you an open door, he'll give you exactly what you need to say to go through there and witness to someone. The best thing you can do is tell them what Jesus done for you. I talked to these that are going to be baptized. I talked to them a while ago. And they looked at me with smiles on their faces saying that they had accepted Jesus as their Savior. And I explained to them that, that baptism is not a Savior. Baptism is just a symbol to the world that they're dying out to that old, old man and they're being raised again in the likeness of, of Christ as far as Christian living goes. And friend, that is a symbol of our Christianity. Well, preacher, I've been saved. It didn't, I've been saved. I've been baptized. That's all fine and well. But if you've been baptized and you've not been saved, you're still lost. 
Old preacher had it said it this way. He said sometimes, he said if somebody gets baptized and they're lost, he said they just go down a dry devil and come up a wet devil. Now, friend, let me tell you, people can die lost, lost without God having been baptized. You must be born again. The gospel message is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I could have my name on every church roll in Madison County and Buncombe County and still die without God except I had accepted Christ as my Savior. Let me ask you something, friend. What's worth going to hell over? What is worth a man, woman, boy, or girl dying and going to hell and spending eternity in hell? What, what's worth that? Is anything worth it? We're here for a short time. The Bible says life is a vapor. Appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And friend, I'll tell you, life is just that. It is a short time. I'm, I'm 50 years old. I'm getting younger every day, amen. But I am. I'm getting, I'm getting old and used to. My 50 years old was sounding like an old man. But I was talking about someone earlier that was, you know, that was uh, uh, much older than me. And I thought, well, that's still young. Amen. I'm hoping that when 100 rolls around, I'm still able to stand here and tell you, amen, stand, stand and tell the church that, that uh, God's still good and I'm still a young man. Amen. I'm dreaming, aren't I? Now, you young folks, you got, I mean, y'all got, y'all got, to, I remember when I was your age. I'm not going to ask how old you are, but I remember when I was. 20, 21, 22, 23 years old. And it don't seem like it was no time. And all of a sudden, I'm 50 years old. <laughs> what are y'all laughing at? It's hard for me to admit it. I just can't hardly do it. But let me tell you something. It, my life is passed just like that. It's well over half over with. And before I know it, friends, somebody will be rolling me down the aisle. And they'll be, if Jesus don't come back, and they'll be saying words over me while I'm rejoicing in heaven. But, friend, life is short. I'm glad that I'm saved and not worried about when I die where I'm going to spend eternity. Amen. Try to stir you up a little bit. If you'll just think about where you're going when you die, amen, y'all ought to have, everybody ought to have a grin on your face from ear to ear. And once in a while, somebody ought to say, whoopee, amen. Born again, saved by the grace of God. You know how long you're going to live? How long are you going to live, Brother Mac? As long as God does. That's how long you're going to live in heaven. I didn't mean down here. I don't know how long you're going to live down here. And I did call you by the right name, amen. Brother Frank, how long are you going to live? That's right. But it's not going to be in these old earthly bodies. I find new aches and pains about every day that I didn't know I had. And I wonder, where'd you come from? Said, I've been waiting for this day to show up. And just another reminder that you're not getting any younger and that you'll soon be eight years old. <laughs> But listen, friend, if I live to be 100, those, those, those extra whatever, how many years they are, are going to pass rapidly, and then I'm going to go out one way or the other, I'm going to go out into eternity. Now, it's possible that Jesus may come back in the rapture before I have to die. Whoopee, amen, I'd look for that, I'd long for that. I would rejoice in the day that Jesus came back and raptured the bride of Christ out, amen. But either way, I'm going to have to go well, let's leave this world. And if I go by the way of the grave, friend, it's not going to be a sad, it's not going to be a sad day for me. It'll be a sad day for some folks. Some folks, it might not be a sad day for them. But for some folks, it'll be a sad day. But praise God, when I get before God, thank God, all the cares of life are going to be over. Because I believe the gospel. I believe the death burial. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I put my eternal future in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a child with childlike faith, I said, Lord, will you save me? Jesus, will you come into my heart? And he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can't deny it. Thank God I'm saved. Amen. The devil may tell you no, but if you believe on Jesus, you're saved by God's grace. With the heart. You say, well, I believe in Jesus. Do you believe him with your heart? Do you believe him with your heart? With a heart, man believeth unto righteousness. It's with a heart that man is born again. And I believe as individuals, we should, 
promote the gospel as often as we can. I believe in the church of promoting the gospel as often as we can. And as simply as I've known how to put it this morning, I'm telling you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But if you don't, you're going to die lost to that God and spend eternity in hell. I don't want to hear that no, bro, no more, preacher. Well, you heard it good this morning. Amen. You must be born again. And the church should be a promoter of the gospel, not only here in our local community, which, which I've got a plan later to, to go forward with that, but we should be a, a, a mouthpiece. We should be a promoter of the gospel around the world. Our church is supporting missions, and I'm glad. And friend, we ought to do, have every effort that we can to support the gospel around the world, moving forward for the Lord. That's number one. Number two, and I've got two more, and I'll be through here in a little bit. I believe it's time to move forward with our worship. And I don't answer my question, but how many of you come here to worship God this morning? Some of you answered anyway. Praise the Lord. I did. What is worshiping God? It's coming with the, with the thought in your heart that I'm going to praise God. I'm going to be happy to be at the house of God. I'm going to be, I'm going to be glad that I went there and I got something from God. I fed from the table of the Lord and am giving God the glory for being able to be fed from the table of God. We ought to move on, move forward with our worship at the house of God. I beg every one of you in here, Come with a prayer on your heart. Lord, let me worship you today. Help the preacher to feed me. And Lord, help me to worship you today and move forward with our worship. You know, four years ago, I was looking at some... I'm not, I mean, this is just the way it was. You're all looking at me kind of curious. And I'm looking at you kind of curious. Then after a while, you begin to scratch your head. Strange kind of character. But guess what? I'm doing the same thing. But you know what? Them two kind of got together. Amen. And God began to bless. And God began to move. And God's still doing that, friend. We need to promote. Amen. We need to promote the worship of the Lord Jesus. I see a whole lot more smiling faces today than I did. I don't believe you can put on that kind of smiling face because I can see where a lot of it comes from way down deep in here. Why? Because you're happy. You're happy to be at church. You're happy to be at the house of God. And friend, by the help of God, amen, let's move forward with our worship of God. And come here for that reason. Come to Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church to worship God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. You pray the devil off the place and we worship God. Amen. Do you think the devil likes this? No, sir. Do you think he likes anything about worshiping God? No, he don't. Do, will he do anything to, to try to destroy that and try to disrupt that? Yes, he will. But if you'll pray and I'll pray, that brings us to our third point. We should move forward in our prayer life. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I'm going to ask you one simple question this morning. Will you pray more? Will you pray more? Will you pray more as a church? Will you pray more as a people, as an individual? Will you call on God just a little bit more? And God's blessings will be upon us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God today. Lord, we've tried to be obedient to thee. Lord, say those things that you would have us to say. Lord, should we have said something, Lord, that was not in thy will, I pray that it be quickly forgotten. Lord, I turn our attention right now in our prayers, God, to those that might be here that's lost without God and going to hell. I pray that you touch them with the power of the Word of God, the convicting power of the Spirit of God, that they might come to the knowledge that they must be born again. In Jesus' name, amen.